Hey guys, Paul here from Meldrum Performance Coaching. Uh, so, back on the podcast, video cast, very, very excited today uh, because I'm doing my first in person full day seminar this Sunday, but for a long time. Uh, long time because of COVID. I've done some in person teaching and stuff like that, but it's really not much cooler. Not Nothing I'd find as much fun as giving a seminar to a whole bunch of different people and being able to work with the energy from the people there, answer specific questions on the fly. It becomes a lot more of an organic experience rather than you know, just doing a video lecture, for example. So uh, with this, what I want to do in this series of podcasts is just go through the, how many topics do I have? There's quite a few. The seven topics that I'm going to be talking about throughout the entire seminar. So there's a lot to go over in a one-day workshop. And what this is, this is really kind of like, I wouldn't say it's a taster because I hate that word. Um, it's kind of like a summary of what you need to do to become a kick-ass trainer. So what I'm going to talk about in these podcasts, I'm going to do one every single day based on what we cover. So the first one is what I think makes a good trainer. So that's going to be the first hour. So being a good trainer is probably the first thing that you should probably identify before you start worrying about what you need to learn, what you need to study, and where you need to spend your time, effort, and energy. So if you are really good at business, really good at marketing, really good at advertising, but and the product you're selling is crappy training, you can only really sell that so many times before people just won't pay for it anymore. So we really need to make sure we need to identify what a good trainer is. So what's the first thing I find in a good trainer? Well, we need to have some movement screening systems. We need to be able to help people move better and be able to execute the exercises well with a high level of technique. Uh, we need to be able to identify as well what exercises we're going to give to people at what time. And this is such an important thing to do. We do. There's so many exercises. There's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of exercises that we could use with our clients, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they are any good. And there's lots of exercises that we feel that we should use our clients. We should be doing barbell back squats. We should be doing full deadlifts on the ground. We should be doing military presses or behind the neck presses in some scenarios. Some people think that's an indicator of shoulder health. Uh, whatever it is, there's so many different exercises that we can do. So, and we feel like we should do. So we need to make sure that the ones that we use in our clients are the ones that are actually best suited for them. And we're also giving them the exercises to help them basically be able to do the stuff that we feel that they need to do. So one really good system of programming is to figure out what exercises you think your clients need to do to achieve their particular goals and then give them exercises to do just that. So we're gonna go over the movement screen in the seminar. Programming is next. So be able to program for clients and give them something to do when they're not with you to give them a program that's based on the principles of progressive overload and efficient exercise selection and has regards for logistics and the time that they need to actually do the session, uh, that is kind of the key to good programming design, program design. You basically want to be good enough at program design so you can give anyone some kind of improvement in anything unless they're the elite of the elite in the particular field. So if someone came to me and they were an elite powerlifter with like a 1,000 kilogram total, for example, there's probably not too much from a programming perspective I can give them that's gonna give them a little boost in performance or improve them over the next 12 weeks. It's highly unlikely because they're so close to their, uh, the ceiling of their potential. But if an average powerlifter comes to me, I could improve them. An average bodybuilder, same thing. A beginner, I could improve them. Uh, a pretty decent athlete in most sports, I can improve their performance. We want to be able to do that with our programming systems to be a good trainer. You should be always able to identify something and pick something that you can improve for that client. Next one is biomechanics. So principles and execution of training. So we need to be able to understand biomechanics at a decent enough level. We don't need to be PhDs in it, but we need to be pretty damn good. So we can help people feel the exercise in the target muscle. We can help them perform the exercise safely with the highest amount of muscle stimulus to the lowest amount of joint fatigue. So that's a super important thing. From there, we need to look at measurements. We also, a good trainer that takes metrics, does measurement, they, quant, not he, he or she, they, quantify exactly what they do with their clients so they can feel a lot better, so they can get better results, so they can actually see what they're doing is working for them. So knowing what metrics to check, check are probably the most important thing. And then that's basically the top five things that you need to be to be a good trainer. Do you need to have a good knowledge of nutrition? Yeah, it's, 
not that bad. But having the most important knowledge of nutrition isn't as important as communication skills, and it's certainly not as important as uh, knowing what metrics to track anyway. Uh, and other things that I think a good trainer has to be good is system development to maximize the customer experience. So what I mean by that and what I'll be talking about on Sunday will be maximizing the client experience through the use of systems to automate check-ins, to make sure appointments are scheduled regularly, that there are no problems going on. Uh, if you can maximize your customer experience, what you'll find is that your clients will stay for a lot longer, which will help you get better at things like assessing movement, program design, biomechanics and execution, and then looking at metrics to measure and manage. So guys, that's a quick summary of what we're gonna be covering. That's all the metric stuff. Uh, looking forward to speaking tomorrow about the movement screen in more detail.